Yes, good morning. Is this mic on? It's working, perfect. Uh, well, thank you for having me, guys. It's a nice party. Not working. Okay, what did I do? It's too high on my face. Yeah. Right now. Is that better? Yeah. All right. Good. Well, I'm Mishko uh, Hebery. Uh, I guess I just got a new label. I, I used to be called, I used to say I'm a father of Angular or the creator. Creator is kind of like I, I made the whole thing. I didn't make the whole thing, right? I only made part of it and then the greater community kind of took over. Uh, I'll go with Papa Mishko. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about router because it turns out router is the thing that's on the top and it's kind of important. Uh, but before we go there, like what is a router? Uh, that's kind of the, the question. And Really? <laughs> Frosty, where is the cable, man? The router is not working. The router is not working. <laughs> Where's the thunderbolt? Somebody, oh, here it is, dude. Isn't it? No. Uh, we need a thunderbolt. Say, we need a thunderbolt, Joe. We need a thunderbolt, Joe. We love you, too. Those cables are still in release candidate, so. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here we go. All right. All right, so what is a router? Router is that thing that takes that thing on top of the box. Uh, and parses it, and based on that, it assembles your application, right? So your application is divided into components. Uh, you got lots of them uh, represented here in a lot of different colors, and the router's job is to kind of figure out which of the components really matter for the user right now, and then pull them inside of each other. In this particular case, there, each component has a outlet, and a component can be loaded into an outlet. And so by assembling a set of components in the proper order, you get a particular view of your application. Now the trick we would like to do, the really important thing about the whole thing is that we really would like to be able to do it lazily, right? We don't want to load every single component out there because there, for some applications there could be literally thousands of them. We just want to load those set of components that are actually needed to render in this particular page. You know, there's been a lot of talk about offline compilation and how we can make the application small, and we have focused on this all throughout. But it turns out that if the router doesn't cooperate and the router isn't written in a specific way, then the router will kind of ruin all this hard work we have put into place to make sure that we can do lazy loading. And so what I want to talk about the router today is how it relates to lazy loading and how the lazy loading is, becomes the enabler uh, for the whole uh, building small kinds of applications. You might have already seen this, so this is just a regular Angular component. Uh, let's see, the, the magical part in here is that the out routes annotation, uh, which uh, specifies which particular routes, uh, we need to, which components need to be loaded for particular routes. Uh, the thing to notice here is that there isn't a single place where the whole route kind of surface area can be discovered. Instead, we always only put this, the, the minimalist amount of information necessary to process this particular component. And by doing so, we, have, we make sure that we don't have to kind of load the whole world, right? It doesn't matter how big your application is. It only matters which of the set of uh, routes are currently active, and only those routes uh, have to be loaded and, and dealt with. So this is why we place the routing information with the component. The other things to notice is, uh, you know, there's, for example, an activate, uh, which is a lifecycle hook. We'll talk about those later. Uh, we have these things called outlets, which is where the child components get loaded into. Notice you can have multiple outlets. They could be named. So the second one is called aux route. The one that it has doesn't have a name. We usually refer to it as a primary route. And the last thing that the router needs to do is it needs to be able to produce route links for you, right? If you, how do I navigate from point A to point B in a predictable manner? And while we're discussing all this, I want, to think, I want you to think in the back of your head, how does this relate to lazy loading? So you get a URL. Well, the first thing we do is we chop it up and into these things we call segments. 
And what we built out of this is something we called a tree of URL segments. Now the thing to kind of notice here is that we can do this operation without having zero knowledge about the kinds of routes exist in your application, right? So this is independent. As a result, we can defer lazy loading as far as possible. So we chop it up uh, into the URL segments. You can be wondering, why is it called a tree? It looks like a list, right? Well, it's actually a tree because we can do fancy kind of things. So for example, here is a more complicated route. Uh, I guess the root route here has multiple child segments. Uh, we can encode this tree-like structure into the URL. And oh, by the way, this is just a particular encoding mechanism that we ship with Angular. You're free to write your own encoding mechanism for encoding these, these trees and decoding them. Um, in here, we also have matrix parameters. Matrix parameters are essentially query parameters, except they're attached to a particular segment in a tree, uh, so that a user has its own set of parameters, and details can have the, its own set of parameters, and the auxiliary chart can have its own set of parameters as well. Um, and so we can build this kinds of trees. But let's go back to our simpler tree, uh, which is the most likely use case, where you just have a, a list of things. We have a tree URL segment, and as I mentioned, we can do this all lazily without having any knowledge of the routes. So now we actually want to turn this uh, segment into an actual component, and we want to start lazy loading things. So every application, and to do that, we need to build something we call a route segment tree. And every application has a root route, and that one is already preloaded, right? There's no lazy loading there. And there we can look through each set of routes and we can say, hey, which one happens to be the one we are interested in? And so we can scan through and say, aha, there is a user ID, and we can match that up with the user, and we now know that the 123 actually belongs to the user component. So we can actually draw kind of a picture around it, and while the individual yellow boxes were called the URL segments, the green boxes now, we call them route segments or routing segments. And so once we have this, we, can, we know that the next component is a user component B, uh, sorry, user component. And so now we can lazy load the user component. And with the user component, we can now lazy load its set of routes. And now we've discovered that the next section is the details. And we can uh, recognize uh, the, the details as being part of the details component. And we go into the details component not shown over here. And we can see if there is more routes. Presumably there are none. And we can now render this particular uh, page. So there are two phases, right? There's the phase of assembling the URL segments. And there's a second phase of uh, assembling the, the route segment tree. And this is where the recognition happens. And it's only during the recognition phase that lazy loading kicks in and we actually start loading the components. This is what allows us to kind of defer the whole thing as far back as possible. So once we have recognized your route, we can instantiate all the components, we can load them to the uh, proper route outlets, and we can start calling lifecycle hooks. And so in this particular case, um, I'm just showing one of these hooks called unactivate. And the unactivate here, you can see it takes the route segment, and the route segment will contain information such as your matrix parameters, your uh, any uh, uh, positional parameters you might have inside of the URL. Uh, it also might contain uh, any other information uh, about that particular thing, only pertinent to your component, right? So the parent component segment will be with the parent component, not with you. And there's actually, we, we made sure that the route segment is immutable. And that means that the route segment cannot actually have a reference to the parent component. So when you do want to get around and say, hey, I want to know who my parent is, this is why we also allow to pass a, a tree of segments for you. And the reason that they're split out is because as you navigate throughout the application, some of the components stay across navigations because they're, you know, if you go slash user slash details or user slash uh, settings, then the user portion persist between them, and so we want to make sure that we can, we can know, let you know that they persist by, by always returning you the same segment identity. Uh, but the trees will change as you navigate from point A to point B throughout your applications. But they do allow you to, to navigate through, so for example, if you want to have a, a, a bread bar at the top, and you, can, you wonder how you got there, you can ask the tree to give you a path of segments to the root. So now, once we have all this, let's look at how we generate links. So here's an example of generating a link. You can see we can pass in a relative path, 
and also a set of parameters which become the matrix parameters. Now, the, it's important to recognize that while you can put absolute paths in there, we highly recommend that all the paths are relative because what that allows you to do is that these components now become reusable and you can move them around, you can decide, oh, you know, I no longer want to have this component in this part of the tree, I can want to move it in somewhere else, or maybe even have the same component in multiple parts of the tree. Or what is oftentimes the case is that when you have a application, sometimes the, the, the developers often have like the, the inner internal customer support kind of version of the application where they can pretend to be different users to see what the user sees and, and usually those are in different URLs. And so these are all reasons why you want to make your URLs relative. So imagine we have two components loaded into each other and they both have views and let's say you have a route link in the, in the view one. So what we do is we copy the existing set of uh, uh, URL segments over because that's the context. That's where we, we begin, right? It's kind of like when you have a, when you say CD because essentially what route link is is kind of like a change directory, right? So you say CD and you say foo. It makes no sense to talk about what the resulting directory is until you know what the initial context is from where you started the navigating from. And so what we do is we copy it over. Now notice what we're copying over is, a, um, is the URL segment tree, which does not require recognition, right? It doesn't require us to lazy load all the components. So we can generate all these links without actually lazy loading them. And this is, again, important because you want to be able to uh, generate links to, to deep into your application and you don't want to force the loading of that, those uh, application segments until you actually navigate to them. Uh, and then once we have the context, we can apply the relative uh, uh, kind of a, a link to it, which is the foo, and so we get a URL like that. Once we have transformed the initial URL tree into the destination tree, we can serialize it, and we're probably going to end up with um, a URL like this. Now, similarly, if you try the same exact operation and you're somewhere else in the tree, the initial location is going to be different, right? You're going to start with user one, two, three details, and then you're going to add foo to the end, and so the resulting URL is going to be different. So, so when you have links, it's important to realize that these links are always relative to some other location inside of the application. And it's actually a benefit uh, that our router has. We say that the router is uh, fractal, which means that at any point Anywhere where you look inside of the application, it behaves just like any other one, and you can nest them uh, repeatedly. So what's happening in here is we start with the URL, we run the parser. A parser is the thing that's pluggable, so if you don't like the way we parse our URLs, you can change that. And we build up a tree of URL segments. And notice that all of this, in the, all of these uh, the sections in the white area of the screen do not require lazy loading. And this is important because we can delay it as far back as possible. We get to the tree, uh, tree of URL segments and then we can generate route links to new set of tree URL segments. Uh, those route links, the only thing they need is the initial context. Uh, but the context, will, while requiring recognition, is something that's already loaded, right? You're already on a page, so you already paid the price of loading it, so that context really is, is essentially free over there. And then they generate new set of uh, URL segment trees, and then we can ask them to be serialized back into URLs, which then end up inside of your application. And both the serialization and the parser part is overridable in your application. For those of you who've been paying attention, you should have been scratching your head and said, but, but how can you lazy load if you actually have a reference over there, right? Presumably on the top it says something like import simple component from some location. And you would be correct. This would totally uh, break the lazy loading as it is right now. And this is, this is an important thing to solve because it's the last puzzling piece of how to get the lazy loading to go. So we have route links that don't need uh, recognition of the whole world of, of routes. We can uh, load them lazily. We can offline compile them. What, what do we do about this reference? So the solution to this reference is we take it and we quote it. We put it in a, in a, in a string. Now we have break, broken the dependency of the root component to the child components. And this is really what enables the, the lazy loading of the whole magical piece. However, once you have this, you have just created yourself a new problem. And a new problem is how do you convert a string to a reference? And while you might think this is a pretty straightforward uh, answer to that question, uh, it actually gets pretty complicated quickly because um, 
remember that, that the code you ship to production will probably be minified, and as a result, it won't have a simple component uh, reference inside. Instead, it's going to be mangled into something else. And so, to do that, we are, rec we are proposing that we will have a specific directory structure, and we will simply use that string as something we pass into system.js to load the particular uh, submodule for us lazily. And then we'll just assume that there is a default component, or there is exactly one component inside of the submodule, and then we will load that component inside of our cells, and we'll use that for further navigating and, uh, and lazy loading the components. And so that requires a particular directory structure. So if you, for example, have these set of routes, then our CLI tool automatically produces these set of directories with notice the plus sign over here, which is the convention that we generate to have uh, the, the lazy loading capabilities available to us. Uh, and then when you quote the component inside of the route definition, by quoting it, you break the last piece of link which allows the tree shaker to break up your application, to break it up into modules, and then have lazy loading take over at runtime uh, for the application. So then it becomes a question for you as to how you want to bundle the application. You know, where do you want to put these, these breaks? Uh, you can go all the way you know, from, I don't want to deal with it, and I'm just going to put reference to, over there everywhere, or you can go the other extreme and you say, I'm going to put strings everywhere and have the lazy loading take over. So lazy loading is, is kind of important because, uh, so I'm sorry, the, the, the routing inside of, the lazy loading inside of the router is important because if we don't have a lazy loading router, all of the hard work we have done into making sure that the components, uh, that the, the framework knows how to lazy load components, that the, the injector is hierarchical, et cetera, all of that kind of comes apart unless the router also plays the game in here as well. So thank you for uh, having me over here. My name is Mishko. You can find me on Twitter. And certainly you can say hello if you see me in the, in the hallway. Thank you. Thank you.